In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide, we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that ever endure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Jeremiah. The priests and prophets address the officials and all the people. This man deserves to die since he has prophesied against this city, as you have heard with your own ears. Jeremiah, however, replied to the people as follows, The Lord himself sent me to say all the things you have heard against this temple and this city. So now amend your behavior and actions. Listen to the voice of the Lord your God. If you do, he will relent and not bring down on you the disaster he has pronounced against you. For myself, I am, as you see, in your hands. Do whatever you please or think right with me. But be sure of this, that if you put me to death, you will be bringing innocent blood on yourselves, on this city, and on its citizens, since the Lord has truly sent me to you to say all these words in your hearing. The officials and all the people then said to the priests and prophets, This man does not deserve to die. He has spoken to us in the name of the Lord our God. Jeremiah had a protector in Ahikam, son of Shaphan, so he was not handed over to the people to be put to death. The Word of the Lord In your great love, Answer me, O God. Rescue me from sinking in the mud. Save me from my foes. Save me from the waters of the deep, lest the waves overwhelm me. Do not let the deep engulf me, nor death close its mouth on me. In your great love, answer me, O God. As for me in my poverty and pain, let your help, O God, lift me up. I will praise God's name with a song. I will glorify him with thanksgiving. In your great love, answer me, O God. The poor, when they see it, will be glad, and God-seeking hearts will revive. For the Lord listens to the needy and does not spurn his servants in their chains. In your great love, answer me, O God. Alleluia, Alleluia! Blessed are those who, with a noble and generous heart, take the word of God to themselves and yield a harvest through their perseverance. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Herod the Tetrarch heard about the reputation of Jesus and said to his court, This is John the Baptist himself. He has risen from the dead, and that is why miraculous powers are at work in him. Now it was Herod who had arrested John, chained him up, and put him in prison because of Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. For John had told him, It is against the law for you to have her. He had wanted to kill him, but was afraid of the people, who regarded John as a prophet. Then, during the celebrations for Herod's birthday, the daughter of Herodias danced before the company, and so delighted Herod that he promised on oath to give her anything she asked. Haunted by her mother, she said, Give me John the Baptist's head here on a dish. The king was distressed. But thinking of the oath he had sworn and of his guests, he ordered it to be given her, and sent and had John beheaded in the prison. 
The head was brought in on a dish and given to the girl who took it to her mother. John's disciples came and took the body and buried it. Then they went off to tell Jesus. The Gospel of the Lord. Today, our readings highlight to us the consequences, the result of weak, corrupt, and insecure leadership. We see this in Jeremiah, how he was falsely accused of blasphemy just because he preached something no one wanted to hear, and that is the truth. And in John the Baptist, he was beheaded not for any wrongdoing, but for speaking against what was wrong. Such injustices still happens today. Innocent people are oppressed and treated unjustly. Saying this, however, does not mean that we are spared from this sin. Because while we may often see ourselves as the victim, we must not forget that we are also, in one way or another, in positions of authority or influence. And so it is important that we constantly ask ourselves, have I? in my capacity of authority and influence, being the cause of suffering to my sisters and brothers because of my weak, my corrupt, or even insecure leadership? If we are honest with ourselves, the answer most probably would be yes, but in different degrees. And so it is time that we do something about it. From today's reading, what we can do, be it as someone in position of authority or as a victim, for a start, if we are in a position of leadership, it is to give people a chance to speak, like how Jeremiah was given such a chance to defend himself. Secondly, it is to be honest with the self. It's when we are not honest with ourselves, we become deaf to the truth, not only choosing to hear what we want to hear, but also be easily influenced by what people would say. Just like Herod, who most probably based his decision on what people say. What would people think or say if I went against my word? Third is to be humble, to accept when we are wrong. We can imply that the priests and the prophets in the first reading were when they allowed the people to decide that Jeremiah should be freed. If on the other hand, we are the victims, especially when we are not even given a chance to speak, like John today. What can we do? Perhaps it is to continue focusing on the bigger picture. Know in faith that there is meaning, purpose and hope in doing God's will. And that was what Jeremiah did, as we hear it in his speech. Often, when we forget to focus on the bigger picture, we ask questions such as, why do we even bother? We might as well not do God's will and live a comfortable life. Second is to keep holding on to the truth so that we do not listen and give in to the false accusations against us. Again, Jeremiah did just that. He knew that ultimately he was serving God. And finally, it is to continue remembering who we are and that is we are God's beloved. Often in the midst of false accusations and injustice and persecution, we forget. We forget who we are and we forget our self-worth and dignity. And as a result, we unknowingly give away this dignity and self-worth. This could have been the case of Herod. In the face of pressure and in his insecurities, he forgot that he was king. And so by giving in to these, he also gave away his authority. Let us therefore today, and whenever we find ourselves, be it misusing our position of authority and influence, or being a victim of weak, corrupt, and insecure leadership, remember the message of today's readings, so that as leaders, we may change our ways, and as victims, we may find consolation in God. And in doing so, God's glory and his message of love justice of repentance may continue to go out, both in life as well as in death. And so in response to God's word today, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. We have listened, O Lord, to your divine words, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant that through his words, which he gave us in the scriptures, may profit us for salvation. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you.